perhaps the most useful advice that I was given when I came to this training was, was to be gentle with myself. And um, although that, that sounded really obvious, what became clear to me was that um, throughout the whole of my adult life I really hadn't been gentle to myself. You know, I'd really given myself such a hard time. And um, with, the, with, with the simple terminology that's used in this training, I began to understand why I'd given myself such a hard time. And with the terminology used of really just recognizing that there is this open intelligence by which everything is known. And it's not something far away, it's not something um, difficult to attain, it's what's looking through your eyes right now. It's what's listening to these words. It's what knows you're, you're sitting in your chair. So it's, it's this intelligence that we're talking about. And um, to then recognize that everything I experience, I can simply call data, keeps it very, very simple. And we don't even need to categorize it into different kinds of data because all data is known by the same intelligence, regardless of how you describe that data, regardless of what further categories you put it in. This is the most fundamental and most comprehensive way we can have of understanding our experience. So there's open intelligence shining forth all of its data. So no matter how you describe your data, it's known by exactly the same intelligence. And what I began to see was that I'd really taken my data to be something that had an independent nature. So that means that my thoughts, my emotions, my experiences, my, my physical sensations were something that I had to be very wary of. I had to pay a lot of attention to. I had to try and manage. I had to try and make them look a particular way. So having good thoughts and um, feeling pleasant sensations in my body and trying to keep at bay the, the negative or unpleasant descriptions, physical pain, feeling unhappy. And so my life became uh, a, a project of really trying to manage my experience, to, to make it look a particular way, to have a certain data set in place that I thought was going to make me happy and was going to make me lovable. And um, I look back now and um, I look back on my life and all of the things that I engaged in and the activities that I did and it's a mixture of um, sadness and humour really at the, the way that I live my life and, but, but also great compassion because I was doing the best that I knew how at the time. I was always doing my best and for most of my life that seemed like a real struggle. So I was struggling with all of my data. You know trying to hold on to the, the, the pleasant descriptions, the, the so-called good data, the, 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 the nice feelings, the, you know, the, the good thoughts, and, and trying to keep at bay the ones that I didn't think somehow were, were part of me or didn't belong in my reality or my experience. And through being introduced to open intelligence and then with the simple instruction of relying on this open intelligence just for short moments repeated many times, I could actually settle into this ease of being and this openness that was always the basis of my experience. And as I began to relax and to allow the data just to be as they are, allow them to flow on by, then I was giving myself space to notice this already present intelligence by which everything was known. So it, it had always been there, it was just a case of me giving myself an opportunity to recognize it and to rely on it. And when I relied on it for these short moments, then this was actually the, the gentleness that, that I'd been looking for. Because I firstly adopted the correct perspective on all of my data. So I could see instinctively and recognize with a direct encounter with whatever I was feeling or thinking or sensing in that moment, that it was shining forth from open intelligence. And because I could test this out for myself through these short moments, 
this was something that naturally increased in confidence. So I tested it out with different, with different data streams, with different experiences, when I was feeling sad. At the beginning, that was very difficult to just to relax and to allow the sadness to be as it was. But I would remember every now and again, just for an instant, just to relax everything. And when I did that, I could see that the sadness was also known by open intelligence. And in that, that first recognition, there was a sense of spaciousness and ease, even around something like sadness. And um, my approach generally was, um, was very intellectual and analytical. And so I wanted to think my way into open intelligence. And um, once I became slightly familiar with this training, then I applied this same analytical intellectual approach where you know, I wanted to work out what a short moment was. I wanted to know whether I was resting with this correctly. And, um, and I started to give myself a hard time when I didn't think that I was relying on open intelligence and I should have been relying on open intelligence and look at that person over there, they're just much better at it than I am and, and all, all, all of this data. So if you find yourself thinking too much about short moments or giving yourself a hard time about not relying on open intelligence, that's just emphasis on more data and it's actually another opportunity just to relax and to be gentle with yourself. Not to now start giving yourself a hard time about open intelligence and data. And so, just, just by showing up in the support network of the Four Mainstays, then it's, it's, it's like everything is taken care of. So all of the doubts, all of the fears, all of the concerns, all of the worries I had about gaining confidence in open intelligence, I could allow to be as they were too because I was surrounded by people that were also making this commitment. And so to be around other people like that was so inspiring, because I could see that, you know, that they were taking responsibility for their data. And if they could do it, then there seemed to be at least a small chance that I could do it. And so I, I did keep showing up. And the results were amazing. You know, from being someone that... Um, I was always worried about something, and even when there wasn't anything that I, th that I could identify that I needed to be worried about, there was still a sense of worry, and it was a worry almost about not knowing what I should be worrying about, this sense of something about to go wrong. Now, there was always something about to go wrong, some unnamed fear that was just lurking somewhere behind me. And, um, that, that's just really just disappeared so naturally. You know, all of my fears about, um, about the future and regrets about the past and, and worries about not being lovable, all, all of these data streams I now see as this expression of this beneficial potency. So all of them, when I allow them to be as they are, allow me to deeply connect with, with every other person on the planet. So to have this amazing connection with what everybody else is going through. So all of these things that seem negative and afflictive are actually the, the key to my open-hearted relating. And the, the sense of wanting to be loved and not feeling lovable are just um, so common. And previously they were such a, a problematic thought or, a, or emotion to have. You know, I really had to do something about them. I had to find someone to love me. I had to prove that I was lovable. I had to create this identity that I thought other people would like. And um, it was really hard work. It was such hard work and um, quite often a complete failure as well. <laughs> and I can laugh now, but it, it, you know, I did all these bizarre things in my life trying to create this identity <laughs> that I thought was going to be you know, the one that everybody would be impressed by and would, would want to spend time with and would feel attracted to and would, would find interesting and experienced and all, all of this stuff. And, and now I can just relax and be myself. Just, just be myself as I am without needing to create any identity. And it, it's such a relief. It, you know, and um, it makes life so easy just to be yourself and disco to discover that your, your natural self is one of complete benefit. 
the more you become familiar with this open intelligence, the more naturally you express your, your power of great benefit in everything that you do and everything that you say. And to be supported in this and to have a framework where you're enabled and empowered and encouraged to express this is just incredible. Because the instinctive recognition and the mental and emotional stability that that leads to is just the starting point. Because the, the demonstration of real confidence is, um, is uh, activities that are of, that are of uh, benefit to all. It's not a self-centered or a, a self-focused activity, gaining confidence in open intelligence. It really allows for a, a recognition of this, of this universal network that we're part of. And with that recognition comes the, the natural expression of benefit in, in everything that we do and we say, in a completely uncontrived, natural way. And, and that's an amazing place to live from. <laughs>